Welcome back to the news at 10. To some company news now, Nigeria's major player in the automobile industry and the sole distributor of Ford Automobile, Costaris Motors, has introduced Ford Escape 2018 model into the market. The general manager, marketing of Costaris Motors, says with the addition of Ford Escape 2018 model into its lineup, Ford has responded to customers' demand for comfort and smart technology. He was speaking at the 7th Auto Parts Africa Expo held in Lagos. For the best of humanity and for best interaction and development of the transport sector industry. It's another revolution in driving experience as Coast Charis Motors launches the Ford Escape 2018 model to bring premium luxury and lifestyle to its loyal customers. O R B Ford! Wow! The taste of the pudding is in the eating. A Ford enthusiast shares her experience after a test drive of the Ford Escape 2018. Well, I think I'll be making this car my choice because it's actually very comfortable. Um, the interior is very pretty. Um, I like pretty things. And um, I think the AC is very effective. You know, with the kind of weather that we have in this country, you need for the, for the AC in your car to be very effective. I can vouch for the AC in this car. And, and I also think it's a smooth drive. I didn't have any of those hitches that you have when you're trying to you know, change your gear from reverse to drive. I would actually recommend the car for anyone. The new Ford Escape comes with distinctive improved specifications like a four-wheel drive, enhanced visibility, safety and comfort, 8.0 touch screen and a very high fuel efficiency. If you know what Ford is uh, made up of in terms of quality, in terms of uh, fuel efficiencies, this Ford Escape has come to do all that and again in terms of brand positioning um, I can tell you for free that uh, the Nigerian market has already accepted this new Ford Escape I mean coming from uh, inquiries and even sales the course Charis Tim believes the Ford Escape 2018 model has responded to customers' demands with smart technology and cutting solutions to make driving an extremely pleasurable experience. All right, please put on the hazard lights. Please put on the hazard lights. All right, now for the rest of the business news, here's Anne Wilder. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Ijoma. I will begin business news tonight with members of the Miners Association of Nigeria seeking government's intervention in addressing illegal mining in the country. At a news conference in Abuja, the president of the association, Mr. Shehu Sani, said that despite efforts at stopping the activities of illegal miners, the business still thrives, resulting in the loss of revenue. The unlisted securities index of the NASD OTC Securities Exchange recorded 112% in the first quarter of this year. And the growth was fueled by 122% increase in the value from 1.61 billion Naira to 3.59 billion Naira. Now over 351 million units of securities were traded, rising from 239 million in the corresponding period. Central Securities Clearing System led the market by volume of trade with 218 million units of its shares in 180 deals. Now let's check out Nigeria's stock market. It started the week with price load shared as renewed sell-off hit major blue chip equities. Let's join Teniola Shibawali for the details. Hello and welcome to the stock market report. The third trading week of May, the Nigerian Stock Exchange kicks off with more profit taken by investors, leading to a 0.84% drop in the All Share Index at the close of Monday's session. Impact of the sell-off swept across the four key major sectors of the market, while the oil and gas sector closed flat. 
Overall transactions churned out a total of 218.77 million units, worth over 2.23 billion naira in 4,109 deals, driven mostly by the shares of UBA, FCMB and Sovereign Insurance. The top three out of 11 gainers are the shares of Caverton, Mutual Benefits Assurance and Sterling Bank, while the top three out of 33 losers are the shares of CNI Leasing, First Aluminium and Hoando. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Teniola Shiboale. All right, thanks a lot, Teniola. Let's see on the global scene now. U.S. and Asian stock markets closed today's session positive amid hopes of a potential breakthrough in trade tensions between America and China. Let's see how they all ended today. With those numbers, we end business news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Wawadu. It's back to you, Joma. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Anne. Dozens of Palestinians have been killed, hundreds more wounded by Israeli troops following clashes at the Gaza border. The violence came as the United States went ahead to open its embassy in Jerusalem today, drawing anger from many in the Arab world. The protests, which had been going on for weeks in the build-up to the Palestinian day of catastrophe, began to escalate on Sunday and worsened today. The clashes with the Israeli security forces resulted in more than 50 deaths. The Israeli army said 35,000 Palestinians were taking part in violent riots along the security fence and that its troops were operating in accordance with standard procedures. Back in Jerusalem, a ceremony marking the opening of the U.S. Embassy was taking place. First Nation to recognize... U.S. President Donald Trump, who was not present, sent a video message. The United States will always be a great friend of Israel and a partner in the cause of freedom and peace. And we extend a hand in friendship to Israel, the Palestinians, and to all of their neighbors. Addressing the ceremony, Trump's senior advisor on the Middle East, Jared Kushner, I'm said the sizing of the embassy in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem shows the, the world the U.S. can the be trusted. People. But today also demonstrates American leadership. By moving our embassy to Jerusalem, we have shown the world once again that the United States can be trusted. We stand with our friends and our allies, and above all else, we've shown that the United States of America will do what's right, and so we have. An excited Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said it was a great day for Jerusalem. What a glorious day. Remember this moment. This is history. President Trump, by recognizing history, you have made history. Reactions to the U.S. Embassy move varied across the world, mainly against the U.S. decision. I will have more perspective on this issue a bit later on in the bulletin, but let's move on and say to sports. We'll be looking at the Super Eagles technical advisor, Guillaume Roy, releasing a 30-man provincial squad list for the 2018 FIFA World Cup in June. And that will be on sports. Please stay with us.